Hey, Maggie. You won't believe what I just heard. It's all about the wedding. Hey, Liliana. I was just gonna text you. Are you there with my mom right now? Yeah, I am. I never thought you guys would end up living under the same roof as mom and dad. I remember you saying that pigs would sprout wings and fly before that happened. Haha, <laughs> how times have changed. So, what's going on, Liliana? What's the deal with the wedding? I gotta ask you about this wedding of yours. Word on the street is that you plan to have it in Colorado. I nearly fell off my chair when I heard that bombshell. Spill the deeds. You heard correctly, sis. Having my wedding in Colorado has been my ultimate dream. The mountain views, the ski resorts. It's like a winter wonderland made for a fairy tale wedding. Jasper and I are both head over heels for the scenery there. And Colorado is actually where we crossed paths. I can still remember that moment like it was yesterday. So picture this, our charming little church in Aspen, Colorado, setting the scene for our perfect ceremony. It's like magic in the making. Don't you think that's a bit unfair? Unfair? What's unfair about it? Man, I really wish I could have had my wedding in Colorado, you know? But Edward and I ended up having a small low-key affair at the church down the road. It wasn't anything super fancy like those luxurious Colorado ceremonies, for sure. I thought it was a lovely wedding. Just close family and friends. It was really heartwarming. We all had a great time, too. No way. It definitely wasn't what I had in mind at all. I had to make so many compromises. It's crazy. I had everything planned out, you know. I wanted to have at least two wardrobe changes to show off different looks. I had this epic vision of descending from the sky like an angel. I imagined the ceremony happening in this breathtaking chateau garden with roses blooming, lavender smelling amazing, and beautiful fountains all around. And of course, I had dreamt of a live band playing a mix of classic French tunes and modern hits to keep the party going. But what did I get in the end? I had to give up on getting the designer dress that I've been wanting since I was a little kid. I didn't even get the 10 layered cake I was drooling over. Can you believe it? It's like all my fancy wedding dreams got crushed. What age do you think we live in? This isn't the good old days, you know. I've been to a few weddings recently, and nobody is going all out like that. Imagine the cost of the cake alone. Oh sure, it's easy for you to talk. You're off having your fancy wedding in Colorado and everything. I had this dream wedding planned right down to the last detail. I even got a quote from the wedding planner, but Edward outright shot it down without even giving it a second thought. And you, being Edward's little sister, you should know better. You and Jasper should be having a more modest wedding not trying to outshine us. But no, you guys just had to go and make it a competition, huh? It's always about stealing the spotlight from us. Typical. Hey, Liliana, listen up. We've been putting a lot of time and effort into planning this wedding. It's not about trying to outshine anyone or steal the spotlight. This is simply the wedding that we genuinely want. And we've worked hard to make it happen. Well, if you are determined to make me look bad, I'm not going to be at your wedding, and neither will Edward. You won't? That's a shame. But if you really feel that way, then I suppose it can't be helped. Yeah, I'm not going to sit through a ceremony that clearly was planned to make our wedding look like it was done on a shoestring budget at a minute's notice. Okay, if that's really how you feel, then if I give you an invitation, it will just make things worse. I'll take you guys off the list, okay? Then you won't have to think about it. Sorry to make you so upset. That wasn't the intention. I can assure you. Oh, wow. Look at you acting all entitled like this grand wedding of yours is a done deal. Newsflash, genius. Cancel it and have a small wedding right here in town. There are plenty of decent little churches around, and who needs a fancy reception anyway? Cut the budget in half and keep it low key. I won't have you thinking you can upstage us, that's for sure. Why do we have to cancel just because you say so? If you don't want to be there, fine. But you don't have any say over the matter. Ugh, listen up, you clueless twerp. I happen to be your older brother's wife, in case you haven't noticed. It's us, the chosen ones, who have the important task of carrying on the precious family name. 
While you're busy prancing off to join Jasper's family, you'll be nothing more than a distant memory fading into oblivion. So here's a friendly reminder, you insignificant speck. As the dutiful wife of the almighty head of this household, it's about time you start paying attention and do as I say. Uh, what the hell? Since when did you have this kind of authority? Neither you nor Edward are the boss of me. I've gone ahead and moved in with your precious brother and parents, all for the sake of preserving our precious family name. Now, the absolute bare minimum you can do is fulfill one measly little request. It's not like I'm asking for the world here. I have every right to ask something of you. All you have to do is cancel your wedding. That shouldn't be too much of a problem. We've already gone ahead and booked the chapel. Made all the arrangements, you know? Changing anything now would cost us a fortune in cancellation fees. Plus, if you think about it, expecting all the guests to cancel their flights and hotels? That's just plain ridiculous. It's simply not feasible. And trust me, it isn't gonna happen. Look, I get it. You might not have had the wedding of your dreams, but that's totally unrelated to us. If you choose not to come, that's your choice and your business. Well, that's extremely unfortunate, Maggie. I'll be telling Edward about this. Just you wait. Hey, sis, why won't you do as Liliana asks? It's not such a big deal. So, you heard? Did she tell you what she's demanding of Jasper and I? I was stunned. I didn't know how to reply. I'm still at work, but I hope you aren't going to make a big problem out of this. You aren't, are you? Just because you didn't give her the wedding she wanted, doesn't mean you have any right to tell me what I should do with mine. I'm still fighting back the urge to give her a piece of my mind. She's your wife. So handle it, would you? Why do I have to deal with this? You've always been like this. Since we were kids, you never listened to anyone. You haven't changed. For once. Would you just do what you're told? I'm your older brother, so could you just do what we ask? You're the baby of the family, so it's time for you to listen to the adults. Got it? Hang on, Edward. Are you really telling me not to have my wedding in Colorado? You're dead serious. I thought you might just be going along with what Liliana is saying so as not to cause trouble. I find it hard to believe you actually mean what you say. Of course, I mean what I say. Every last word. A small wedding at a local church was good enough for us. And it is sure as hell good enough for you and Jasper. You probably haven't given any thought to the guests either, have you? How many of them can just drop everything and fly to Colorado? Not to mention the cost. There must be a lot of friends and family who are going to struggle to afford such an extravagant wedding. Everyone I invited said they'd be happy to come and were looking forward to it. They could always have said that they couldn't make it. I wouldn't have been offended. No, Maggie. They are just being polite. There's no way everyone on your guest list can afford a ticket to Colorado in a nice hotel. Well, actually, Edward, we are covering travel expenses. It's all included in the plan. Nobody is going to be out of pocket paying for tickets. It's not just about the money. Man, Maggie, you are so self-centered. What about the time? People can't just go to Colorado and back in a day. Have you thought about that? Well, they'll need to stay there, of course. But that's why we have chosen a time when most people are able to take a break. We are only inviting a few close family and friends. It's not going to be a big ceremony. I don't care. You are not having a wedding in Colorado. That is my final word. You got it? Mom and Dad seem to be really looking forward to it. Look, why don't you cancel and have a big wedding right here? You can invite as many people as you want without causing problems for everyone. As the soon-to-be head of this family, I've thought it all through. Unlike you, I gave consideration to everyone involved. We didn't want people to feel the obligation to spend loads of money. We didn't want to put people out of pocket. That's why we had our wedding right here in town. Yeah, because the quote for your initial plan was so ridiculously expensive, right? 
You had to abandon it because it was going to use up every last penny you had. That's not what happened. It is. Liliana told me. Jasper and I started planning and saving for this years ago. That's how it is possible. We didn't just suddenly decide we'd go to Colorado. This wedding plan has been years in the making. You guys didn't save for anything and just decided to have the most lavish wedding without any planning whatsoever. Don't lump us in the same category as you guys. Your budget was only a fraction of the quote, right? How are you qualified to make a judgment on that? You don't know our situation. Hey look, I'm just calling it as I see it. It's pretty obvious to anyone with eyes that you don't exactly have stacks of cash laying around. You even went on that fancy trip overseas right before your wedding. Isn't that basically like having the honeymoon early? And let's not forget Liliana, constantly bombarding us with photos of her extravagant shopping sprees and lavish dinners on Instagram. She spends money like it's going out of style, as if there's an unlimited supply. No wonder you couldn't afford the wedding she had in mind. Let's be real here. With your salary, it would have been mission impossible to keep up with her extravagant lifestyle. Don't you make fun of me. I've got some savings. Like a few coins in a piggy bank? <laughs> ha ha. Very funny. How would you know anything about my finances anyway? I'm your sister, remember? You've never grown out of smoking and drinking and you still love the casino, right? Can you even save it all? And what about those model trains you love making? They must cost a lot of money too, right? How do you know all this? Have you been spying on me? You don't realize how much of your private lives are on the internet, do you? It's not hard to see what you are both doing with your money. Aren't you worried about the future? You just spend money as if you don't have a care in the world, and then wonder why you can't have the wedding you want. So where do you get off telling us we can't do what we've been planning and saving for? You don't have a leg to stand on. If that's going to be your attitude, I won't be going to your wedding. That's for sure. That's what Liliana said. You'll regret this. And by the time you realize what you've done, it will be too late. Do you understand what I'm saying? Your only brother won't be there on your big day. How about that? If you really don't want to come, Jasper and I aren't going to force you. It's entirely up to you. We are going to have the ceremony the way we want it. That's it. I'm not going to have anything more to do with you guys. Same here. You'll regret this. Don't come crying to me begging us to go to your stupid wedding. I'm going to post all over the web about this. I'm 100% against your marriage. Your friends will all see it and then nobody will celebrate your stupid wedding. And it will serve you right. Grow up, Edward. Don't bring other innocent people into this. It's you who needs to grow up if you won't listen to me and Liliana. You're like a spoiled little child. Maggie, are you there? I've just been to the bakery and bought some yummy looking cookies. Do you want to share them? Oh, that's right. You're not here, are you? You must be in Colorado by now, right? Oh, sorry. I didn't notice your message earlier. The time difference here is messing with me. You and Edward go ahead and eat the cookies. Are you in Colorado yet? Yes, we've just arrived in the airport. Well, your parents are here. Has it ended up as just you two having a wedding on your own? No, everything is going according to plan. We are here a few days ahead of the guests to have a final meeting with the planner at the venue. Mom and dad are on a flight tomorrow night. Have they been packing? Packing? Of course not. What? What do you mean? They're booked on a flight arriving tomorrow night. Well, there isn't going to be a wedding, is there? What are you on about? Of course there is. We're already here in Colorado and everyone else is scheduled to arrive over the next couple of days. You mean to tell me you still don't know? You'd better contact the venue right away. It was absolutely scandalous that Edward's younger sister was going to have a fancy wedding in Colorado. We couldn't have that at all. So, I canceled it. Thank you. What? You're happy? So it was you that canceled the wedding. What do you mean? You knew? Right after you called the venue pretending to be me, I happened to call our wedding planner. She suspected something fishy was going on. But anyway, I was able to catch her just in time. 
But I canceled it. You sure did. So it's canceled then? Yes. Didn't you just say you canceled it? Well, yes, but so are you in Colorado right at this moment? We actually went with a company that specializes in Colorado wedding packages. Our planner gave them a call and it turns out our top pick for a venue had a sudden cancellation. So she proposed the idea of switching our ceremony to that very place. What? The place we had first wanted to use is really popular and you have to wait years sometimes for a slot. We missed out on our original application by a matter of minutes and settled for the place we thought we were going to use. But you canceled it. So behind an incredible stroke of luck and great timing, we were able to move our wedding there. That's why I was saying thank you. So you're saying you got your first choice and you were going ahead with the wedding? Yep. Just look at this place. Isn't it wonderful? What? It looks beautiful. It's like I've always dreamed of. Yes, it's all thanks to you, Liliana. It's going to be even better than we had planned. That's not the way I thought it would turn out. And apparently there was a couple who were able to take the venue you had canceled. They were over the moon. So you've made two couples very happy. I feel sick. I told all the guests about the change of venue. Mom and dad will be here tomorrow night. Look after the house while they are away, will you? Well, okay then, we'll be there. You and Jasper are paying for the flights, right? We may as well make the most of our chance to go for free. I've got a nice white dress I could wear. What? No, that's impossible now. You could at least let me take some photos I can use on Instagram. Insta, that's all you care about? I'm sorry, but you aren't on the guest list. I mean, I suppose if you pay for it yourselves. But getting tickets and things at such short notice is going to be difficult. Not to mention, expensive. I just want to take a few photos, that's all. That's just not plausible either. As I said, the venue is super popular. So we don't have any free time there. It's a really tight schedule. So you're saying we can't have any part of it whatsoever? Not at all. There should be a present for you from me arriving the day after tomorrow. What kind of present? It might even change your life. I hope you like it. Bye now. I've got to go to the final meeting with our planner. Wait! Hey, Maggie, what's the meaning of this? It's the middle of the night here. I'm turning off notifications. Don't you dare. Is this your present? Oh, you mean the invoice? Yes. You were the one who canceled my wedding. So it's only right that you should pay. What? Why on earth should we pay? I thought the invoice was self-explanatory. But it ended up in your favor. You got exactly what you wanted and thanked me for it. That was the end result, yes. But it doesn't change the fact that you pretended to be me and canceled my wedding. But don't worry. As I said, another couple was able to jump into our canceled spot at the last moment. So you'll only be charged for miscellaneous things like labor costs and travel expenses, rearrangements of the chapel, that kind of thing. $10,000 for miscellaneous costs? If it was the full cancellation fee, you'd be adding another zero to that. You're lucky it's only $10,000. Why the heck is it so expensive? Well... There were a few trips to Colorado to meet the planner and inspect the venue. And of course, the admin fee for changing the church. And the contacting of guests to tell them. Oh, and because we changed churches, we also had to change hotels for some of the guests. And I almost forgot the charter bus to pick up and drop off the guests from their hotels. It all adds up. But you happily changed the church. You wanted to. Yeah. And we are forever grateful to you. But it only worked out because I happened to contact the planner. If you hadn't called her, the whole thing really would have been canceled. Your deception only came to light out of pure luck. If I had called the planner even an hour later, that would have been it. So I'm not responsible for the cost? That's just what it cost to change venues at the last minute. All the plans we made over the months went right out the window. We've also had to sit down with the planner again. 
Paying for this might just help you to see how much damage you've done. You think? I'm going to talk to Edward and have him sort it all out. I'll tell you this for free. That invoice was written up in accordance with state law by our lawyer. You can't just wish it away. You went and got a lawyer involved? If you refuse to pay, we'll see you in court. I've got the phone records and a recording from the travel agent of you pretending to be me and canceling my wedding. If that's not enough, I've also taken screenshots of your Instagram post posting about ruining my wedding. I can easily print out all the malicious comments too. Wait a minute, Maggie. You and that stupid brother of mine post every little thing you do. The whole world can see what you're up to. Hang on, I'm just a housewife. There's no way I can afford to pay for all of this. I told you my present might just change your life, didn't I? It will be a good chance for you to get off your butt and work. Me? Get a job? Yes. Mom told me the reason you and Edward are living with mom and dad in the first place is because you are having financial problems. Mom told me she's asked you to repeatedly to pay something towards the running of the house. But you never have. And you won't lift a finger to help with the housework. You're a pair of parasites. No, no. We are doing them a favor by living with them. Oh, really? Doing them a favor, are you? I suppose they begged you to live with them. Is that it? Exactly. Well then, they no longer wished for you to live there. So please kindly get out. The stunt you pulled trying to cancel my wedding was the final straw. They don't have any more patience for you two. They'll tell you themselves when they get back from Colorado. Hang on a minute. We can't live on Edward's salary alone. We don't have to pay for anything if we live here, so we are free to use Edward's pay on ourselves. So not paying your fair share is intentional then. It's not that you can't. You just don't want to give up your fancy lifestyle. Whatever. It's time for you to leave. I'm sorry, Maggie. You've got to convince your parents to let us stay. Can't be done, sorry. And I need to get some sleep, or I'll be a wreck at my wedding. Good night. Don't just abandon us, Maggie. Next time you'll be talking to our lawyer. If we are forced to leave, we'll be out in the street, penniless. You know Edward hasn't saved a cent. Maggie, answer me. Don't block my messages. Our wedding went off without a hitch, which was such a relief. When mom and dad returned home, things took an unexpected turn. They kicked Edward and Liliana out of their house. Apparently, Edward claims he had no clue about the phone call Liliana made to cancel our wedding. Talk about a major communication breakdown. When he saw the wedding invoice, he was beyond furious. But let me tell you, Liliana didn't hold back either. She was furious with him for initially supporting the idea of canceling the wedding. It's been a roller coaster of constant arguments and tensions between them. Unfortunately, it seems like they're heading for divorce. It's becoming increasingly inevitable. On the bright side, both of them are still working, but now they have to cover all their expenses on their own. On top of that, they still owe me money that they need to pay back. It's a tough situation for them, and it seems like they're barely scraping by to make ends meet.